What's good, fam? Teacher Eddie still has the flu, and I'm doing salmonella today. Again, I don't want to stop doing videos, even though I feel like dog poop. But this one should be a lot of fun, because Michael Malloy, or as he's known in New York City, um, Iron Mike, before there was Mike Tyson, there was Iron Mike Malloy. Uh, Mike Malloy, the indestructible, um, Mike, Mike, the durable, that's my favorite one. Uh, but he is kind of like a folk hero in New York city. Uh, so this story should be amazing, especially in the hands of Sam Onella. <laughs> Hey kids, time for another riveting tale from the annals of history. Our story begins in New York in 1932 with a man named Michael Malloy. Not much was known about Malloy except for the following. He was around 60 years old, homeless, an alcoholic, Irish, and a former firefighter. So one day a few guys were hanging out in the local speakeasy including Tony Marino, the owner of the joint, and a couple of regulars by the names of Francis Pasqua and Daniel Kreisberg. And who else stumbles in but old Dusty McGee looking to get his morning fix. Marino's like, you know, I've had it up to here with that Michael Malloy character. He never pays his tabs, smells like the crevice behind an unwashed ear, harasses my clients hell. Do you know the Hindenburg disaster didn't actually happen? Yeah, it was an inside job by the government to make Big Zeppelin look bad. Oh my god. Personally, I'm glad. One less industry controlled by the fucking Krauts. The Hindenburg disaster doesn't happen for another five years, dumbass. Ah, oh, bite me. And every day, he ends up like that. So Pasqua's like, yikes, seems like quite the dilemma on your hands. Lucky for you, I've come up with the perfect solution. Let me hear it. I say we deploy a ploy to destroy that unemployed Malloy. Shut up. Anyway, go on. I'll take out a life insurance policy on him. Then we let him drink as much as he wants. Obviously he's gonna kick it, I mean look at him. No self-control. See that? He just drew from the stockpile while there's still moves to be made on the tableau. Oh, I like that joke. <laughs> then, once he's dead, we get all the money for ourselves. Win-win. The first part of the plan went through without a hitch. Pasqua took out not one, but three policies on Malloy's life, with Joseph Murphy, a bartender at Marino's, posing as Malloy's brother and being named as the sole beneficiary. In total, the group stood to gain $3,576, which is like 66 grand in today's money. With all that in place, they begin the second part of the plan. Hey, Malloy. Good to see you, man. Say, uh, what, what happened to your arm? Yeah, the other day I got in a fight with a goose. Got bit pretty bad. Been leaking pus for about a week now. But hey, I got the breadcrumbs. Hell yeah. Okay, well anyway, guess what? You're tagged. You know who he reminds me of? Like this legit, this story, uh, could be like an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, you know, the gang commits insurance fraud. Uh, and this guy, uh, Mike Malloy, reminds me a lot of, uh, I forget what his name is, but the dude who uh, used to be a priest, and the gang messes with him so much, like he turns into a homeless, uh, alcoholic junkie who's like sucking, sucking dick for crack, uh, or sucking crack for dick, whichever one, right? Uh, but that's who he reminds me of. And, like, this could definitely be, like, Marino is definitely, like, the Danny DeVito character. Uh, Pasqua, Pasqua was, interestingly enough, an Undertaker. Uh, and that was, uh, and not the wrestler, but an actual Undertaker. And, uh, he was going to try and make money from, uh, the burial. And later on, I'm sure Sam Manel is gonna, uh, get into it. Uh, he had ties with the, uh, coroner. Uh, who put a bullshit reason, uh, like uh, he died of pneumonia or something. Ab now has unlimited credit. Oh, cool. Well, uh, what's that mean? It means you can drink as much as you want and we can't stop you. Bet. Naturally, he orders shot after shot and the gang happily complies. It gets the gang, to the point yeah. where Malloy's drinking way more than should be humanly possible. But instead of dropping dead or passing out, after a while he's just like, Hi! 
See ya. Within 24 hours, he's back at Pretty it, giving much. his liver the equivalent of a Tyson uppercut and being no worse for wear. This went on for a few days before the boys were like, alright, we need to up the ante here, and decided to replace Malloy's typical shots with wood alcohol, otherwise known as methanol. Keep in mind, as little as 4% methanol by volume is enough to make a moonshiner go blind, and just two shots of the pure stuff should be able to kill a man. But Malloy slammed back just as much as he normally would, totally none the wiser, and was like, still see ya. Anyway, see ya. They tried again for a few more nights, he was fine. Soaked some expired oysters in wood alcohol and fed them to him, he was fine. They gave him a sandwich made from rotten sardines and carpet tacks, motherfucker asks for another. They were like, alright, this- uh, he, Yeah, he was, he was, he was like, finally some good fucking food, you know? Um, but not only that, they mixed, um, various, they used like rat poison as well. It wasn't just sardines and fucking nails. Like, they used rat poison, and this motherfucker gobbled that shit up like Gordon Ramsay. Like, oh, finally, some good fucking food, man. That shit wasn't raw, even though it was raw. Uh, but they also put, um, like, antifreeze in the shit he was drinking. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, drink all the alcohol you want. They were really trying to kill this motherfucker. And, uh, yeah, they used poison. They used um, antifreeze. They used turpentine. This man's got a lead belly. There's got to be something else we can do. So one day after he passed out, they drove him half a mile to yes. the park, tossed him out into the snow, took off his shirt, and soaked his head and chest in water. They drive away thinking they've finally done it. But when Marino clocked in at the speakeasy the next day, Malloy's already there, just hanging out, barely even sniffling. Finally, they just said, fuck it, ran the guy down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This guy, that's why they called him the Irish Rasputin or the American Rasputin. Uh, but Mike the Durable was really what he was known as, like, during the time. So, um, and that's going to come in really important later on. So it wasn't that they just took him out and threw him in a pile of snow and poured water on him. Number one, they poured a lot of cold water on him, like gallons of it. Uh, but what happened was a couple of cops actually uh, discovered him laying there, and they took him to a shelter... Uh, where, you know, he was given clothes and everything else. So it is possible that, you know, if he wasn't found by the cops, that he might have died. Uh, but it wasn't that, you know, they took him out there, like, you know, like when they threw Rasputin in the water in, in the bag, and he just magically appeared, the, uh, you know, the next day. Uh, he was actually rescued by police officers, because he was very well known uh, in the neighborhood. ...down with their buddy's cab and backed over him again for good measure. For once, Malloy didn't show up the next day. The gang was cautiously optimistic. After all, there are 60-year-olds who bite the dust just from one wrong step in the shower, let alone yeah, exactly. the force of a half ton of steel going 50 miles an hour. They called all the local hospitals and morgues in an attempt to find where he ended up, but they couldn't get any useful information from anyone. Lo and behold, five days later, the guy limps his way on in once again, with a mighty thirst and little memory of the incident. The gang debated just icing some other random drunkard, because this one's the fucking juggernaut, apparently. I don't think that's correct because I'm very familiar with this story. Like I said, in New York City, like this, this is this is like the stuff of legends, right? Mike Malloy, Durable Mike, Mike the Durable. Um, he did suffer some broken bones, of course. I mean, he got run over twice at like 50 miles an hour. Um, so there were some broken bones and he was in the hospital for quite a bit. I think for like a month or so, so I don't, again, I could be wrong, but I don't think it was five days. I think it was more like a month, uh, but we could double check that, of course, in the comment section. Apparently, but they decided to try one more thing before calling it quits. After Malloy went through his usual blackout routine, they took him up to Murphy's room, stuck a gas line in his mouth, wrapped a towel around his face, and turned it on. Within an hour, Malloy finally stopped breathing. After countless attempts on his life, at long last, they were successful. However, as you might have realized, the final method of murder was a far cry from the same- Yeah, I mean, honestly, if I didn't know the story, I'd be sitting there like, Okay, and then he got up and pulled the hose out of his mouth and just went down and was like, Yo, y'all bitches got any more of them sardine, nail, and rat poison sandwiches? Because that was fucking delicious, man. Simple elegance of the original plan, which is something they never really thought about until it was too late. Hey guys, what's poppin'? Uh, my brother, Michael Malloy, is dead. Can I have money now? Oh dear, I'm so sorry. What happened? Uh, what? Why did the man die? Uh... 
Pneumonia. I see. And when can we Brain see the trust. body exactly? Uh... So, after a quick medical examination, the men were convicted of first-degree murder and attempted fraud. And yeah, so he skipped over the, the, the most interesting part. So what happens is, uh, yes, they finally do kill Malloy, right? So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of them was an undertaker, uh, and they had pretty close ties with the coroner uh, in New York City. So they had the coroner list the cause of death as pneumonia, and then they quickly uh, have him buried, right? But, like I said, uh, Mike the Durable, Durable Mike, Iron Mike, uh, was well known. And so when the police heard that he had died and that these you know guys buried him really quickly, they were like, uh, something doesn't seem right, man, because the because durable old durable Mike, old Iron Mike, ain't just gonna die like that, right? So they actually have the body exhumed, and then uh, th they have uh, somebody else uh, do the medical investigation and the autopsy, and that's when they discover that he actually died from uh, uh, the gas poisoning or whatever it was. Uh, so then the men are put on trial. The the coroner. Uh, was uh, made an accessory after the fact, kind of like Samuel Mudd uh, was after the assassination of uh, Lincoln, right? Where the where the phrase uh, "Your name is Mudd" comes from. Uh, so the coroner was, I think, let out on bail or something like that, and one of the dudes uh, was put in jail. But like the three main uh, conspirators, they were all executed in Sing Sing prison in, here in New York City. Uh, I believe they got the uh, electric chair because that's what Sing Sing was famous for. But yeah, that's how they got caught. Because number one, yeah, the insurance company, even though it was the 1930s, they were pretty suspicious as to like, you know, what the hell happened here. But then when the cops heard who it was, they were like, nah, this, this doesn't sound right. And subsequently sentenced to death by electric chair. And while the executioner flipped the switch, Malloy's ghost sat in the corner, <laughs> chowing down on some antifreeze and sardines. God damn, I was waiting for Malloy to, to come in like the Malloy comes in as the executioner, right? The executioner comes in with a hood on, and then he rips it off like Vince McMahon, and he was like, It was me, Austin. It was me all along. That would have been Chef's Kiss ending. Dean Souls just laughing his ass off. Moral of the story, life is unpredictable. That's why we have insurance for it in the first place. That's if you true. ever commit fraud against life, just know that life's going to commit a little fraud back. Till next time, I'm Salmonella, and thank you for watching. Thank you, Salmonella. Love you. Love Salmonella's videos. That was great. That is one of the best stories out there. A lot of people don't know it or are not familiar with it. But of course, regionally here again, especially when you when you go in, you know, circles of, you know, history and discussion, and especially in, you know, the city and bars. Like it, it he's a pretty big deal here in New York City. But either case, I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. Let me know in the comment section below. What did you think of the video? What do you think was the most creative thing that they tried to do this brain trust? For me, it was definitely like, man, all right, so let's make a sandwich, right? We're going to, what would, sardines, sardines, right? Uh, now let's just throw some nails in there and put some rat poison on it just to be safe, right? Uh, one of them came up with the idea of the, um, I forget if it was clams or oysters, uh, soaked in, uh, the alcohol. Cause one of them saw somebody die after eating oysters and whiskey. So like, again, brain trust over here. But anyway, I've been teacher ready. I hope you enjoyed this video, fam. If you haven't done so yet, again, I'm working hard here. I need the help. So if you haven't subscribed yet, if you haven't, uh, you know, click that like button, leave a, leave a comment. It means the world to me. And also check out the links in the description or the links right over here. And baby Yoda, thank you for being quiet. I've been teacher ready and I'll catch you next time. Fam. And as always, shouting out the Patreons who keep things running here. The Chancellors, Elena G, Alex S, Cuckles, John Alonzo, Naval Colt, The Hollow King, The Principal Tier, Addison Lynn, Blue Tech, Chad A, Chris H, Chrissy Clement, Freeman Stephenson, Joshua Stewart, Kiara, 
Laura, Lord Gandalf, Moody Kakari, Nathan, Quiet J, Rachel H, Robin, Robin B, and Vijandra. I've been Teacher Eddie, and I'll catch you next time. Fam!